today in class we talked about perfect squares. So for instance, three squared is three times three, the number times itself, that equals nine. Nine is the perfect square in this case. It's a number when you take a whole number multiplied by itself. That's a perfect square. This is one application of exponents. Our exponent here is two, but our exponent could be anything. So now we're gonna look at some things we can do with other exponents. So for instance, if I had two to the fourth, this two is called our base, The four is the exponent. Sometimes this is read as two to the fourth power. So you might also hear that exponent referred to as a power or two to the power of four, same thing. All right, but the base is telling us what number I'm multiplying. The exponent tells me how many times. So this is going to be two times two times two times two. This one you could probably do in your head. Two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. Two to the fourth power is 16, done. Some other things to look at are negatives. If I have negative two to the fourth power, there's two different ones here. I could have negative and then two to the fourth power, or I could have negative two in parentheses to the fourth power. These are different. These parentheses really matter. This here, this negative is not part of the exponent. So this is gonna be negative and then two times two times two times two. So that's gonna be negative 16. But here, this negative two is being multiplied four times. Negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. Now I know the two times two times two times two is still gonna be 16. But looking at the sign here, negative times a negative is positive. Positive times a negative is negative. Negative times a negative is positive. So this will go back to positive 16. So these parentheses really make a difference. The other thing to look at is when we have multiple numbers that each have exponents and how we can simplify these expressions. Two cubed or two to the third power times two squared. Order of operations tells me that I would do exponents first and then multiply. So I could do two cubed, two times two is four, four times two is eight. I can do two squared, that's gonna be four. Then I would do eight times four and get 32. However, there's another way I can get this answer. And sometimes the problem will just ask you to simplify this expression in which case I don't really need a number. I just want a simpler way of writing two cubed times two squared. In which case, if we look at what this really means, two cubed is two times two times two, and then I'm multiplying by two squared, which is two times two. If I look at this entire expression, you might be able to see I have the same number multiplied over and over and over again, but now I have it five times, which is really just two to the fifth power. Okay, well, instead of writing all of this out, because if I use bigger numbers than three and two, how can I get five from three and two? All I did there was add the exponent three plus two to get two to the fifth. This is called the product property.
product being the answer of a multiplication problem. When you have two numbers with the same base raised to exponents, you add the exponents together to simplify that product property. We also use this when we're simplifying algebraic expressions, which is extremely helpful because here you could get to 32 either way. If I did two to the fifth power, which I should probably throw in there, two to the fifth power in order to do this in your calculator, so you're not doing two times two times two times two times two in your head, there's this little button, looks like a upside down, triangle or it looks like a triangle without the base. So I would enter two and then that button and then five. Let's see if I can pull it up on my calculator for you. The carrot is right here. I know it's blurry. equals 32, which we also got over here. So depending on what the question is asking, you can simplify by adding exponents, or you can put it in your calculator. You can do both. Sometimes only putting one thing in the calculator leads to less mistakes. So this is all with numbers as our base. Sometimes we have variables as our base. Sometimes we have algebraic expressions. Um, that we need to simplify. So for example, if I change this to x. Well, now I don't know what number it's going to be, but still using the product property and remembering that this is really just x times x times x times x times x, one, two, three, four, five. I have five x's being multiplied together, so x to the fifth power is a simpler way of writing x cubed times x squared. And again, if you want to skip writing it all out, I'm just gonna take my two exponents and add them together. Three plus two is five. This is the product property for exponents. The next property we're going to look at is when we have an exponent raised to an exponent. So I have five squared all to the third power. Now, order of operations would tell me I would do what's in parentheses first and then take the exponent, which means I need to do this exponent and then raise that to the third power. That's gonna be a really big number. 25 times 25 times 25, or remember our caret, 25 to the third power. Is 15,625. So instead of talking about 15,625, because that's a huge number, I really just want a simpler way of writing this expression. And it's telling me, this exponent here is telling me I want whatever's in parentheses multiplied by itself three times. So I have five squared times five squared times five squared, which goes back to what we were just talking about. I have five, the base is the same. I have the base of five three different times and I can just add all of these exponents together because this is really five times five times five times five times five times five. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, or two plus two plus two, which is six, or two times three.
So we talk about this as raising a power. Five squared is a power to a power. Again, power is just another word for exponent. So here we can multiply exponents. And the base will stay the same. So five squared to the third power is just five to the sixth power. Just like the power rule, this especially comes in handy when we're dealing with exponents and I can't actually evaluate anything, but I can simplify it. If I have x squared to the third power, same as these fives, this would be x squared times x squared times x squared, or x times x times x times x times x times x. Either way, I'm gonna have six x's. You could also just get that from doing two times three. We have x to the sixth power. And this is what we do when we have a power raised to a power.